Bonsoir à tous. Je suis Martine Lévy et je représente Good evening. I'm Martine Lévy and I represent the World Association of Gold Guides and Scouts. And we monitor, we are sitting on the steering committee of this forum. And I'm pleased to be part of this moderator panel with Chantal Crevin and somebody from the sharing of good practices. In the same context, I will now give you the list of the 10 first NGOs that asked for the floor in the order in which they registered. I want to remind them that they have the floor for two minutes only. So please only speak about their activity in connection with the topic of the forum. Chantal will be in charge of monitoring your time. The time dedicated for this session is very short, and NGOs who won't have the opportunity of talking directly will have an opportunity of sharing their reflection and experience. In the chat, all this will be included in the conclusions by Marie-Christine. Uh, tomorrow, on Tuesday, we'll have a longer session of presentations, and at the end of the session, Marie-Christine will give us a summary of what was shared in the chat box. The first NGO to come to the floor is Andrea La Peña from Lifelong Learning Platform. And I'm asking Alexandre Ginoyer to be ready to step in. Lisbeth, Lisbeth, tu peux parler de oui, s'il te plaît. D'accord. Le temps est parti. Alors, merci de me donner la parole et puis de commencer par les plus jeunes. Quoi de plus normal quand il s'agit d'atteindre la citoyenneté mondiale que de partir du plus jeune âge pour construire les fondements de ce concept L'Organisation mondiale pour l'éducation préscolaire, l'OMEP, ONG partenaire de l'UNESCO depuis 1948, est présente dans 67 pays dans les cinq régions du monde. Et c'est une ONG dédiée entièrement à la petite enfance. La lutte pour les droits de l'homme et la reconnaissance de l'enfant comme citoyen a une longue histoire. C'est en 1919 que la reconnaissance des droits de l'enfant commence à trouver un écho international avec la création de la Société des Nations. Mais il faudra 70 ans pour arriver à la Convention internationale des droits de l'enfant en 1989. 1989. Je vous rappelle que c'est une convention non contraignante. Notre plaidoyer de l'OMEF, il est sans appel. L'enfant est un citoyen dès la naissance et la jouissance de tous les droits, dont le droit à l'éducation. Et c'est par une éducation informelle puis formelle dès le plus jeune âge, assurée par les familles, les communautés, les associations et les institutions, que l'enfant apprendra à passer du giron maternel à l'environnement local, régional, mondial et à découvrir ainsi le monde sous ses nombreuses facettes. Notre planète atteinte de plein fouet par les catastrophes naturelles li, ou, li, ou bien liées au réchauffement climatique, à la pandémie, aux nombreux conflits, nous oblige à porter un autre regard, et ce depuis le plus jeune âge. C'est pourquoi l'OMEP plaide pour une éco-citoyenneté. C'est notre deuxième idée forte. Dès le plus jeune âge, éco soyons éco-citoyens dès le plus jeune âge, en développant entre autres un enseignement à la démarche scientifique, au raisonnement, à l'esprit critique. Vous le savez tous ici, ceci est une garantie contre la pensée unique et restrictive. Si nous voulons un monde où l'éco-citoyenneté sera souveraine et bienveillante envers tous les humains dès le plus jeune âge, merci Lisbeth, ainsi qu'au de notre terre. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup Lisbeth. C'était un vrai parcours. Merci. Je me suis trompé. Je vais vous donner le lien encore, dans différentes langues, dans beaucoup de langues. Oh, ok. Donc, là, vous êtes. Nous pouvons vous voir. Nous devrions être capables de vous entendre si vous mutez votre micro. 
introduce yourself and tell us what you do. You've got two minutes. I think I, I think I have um, some problem with the audio or something. No, no, it's okay. We are hearing you very well. You can go on. Please speak because you only have one minute now. So please speak now. You have the floor. Okay. Um, well, I'm here just to listen and and how to say. Can I speak in, in Spanish? Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, bueno, primero que nada, bueno. Well, first of all, good morning. My name is Dania Diaz from Panama. I'm very interested and very excited uh, in participating in this Congress. I didn't know that I had to speak, but anyway, here I am. If you have any um, queries, any questions, I'm available uh, for you to you. And I'm honored to participate. I'm honored to be in touch with UNESCO participating in such an important Congress, and I am willing to cooperate and collaborate in everything that is needed. Thank you. Now, if someone else would like to uh, take the floor, Béranger, you have the floor. So, hello, hello. my name is Béranger Savelia for Parks Christie International. Dear members of the NGO committee, it is representatives of uh, NGOs. Since 2018, UNESCO and Parks Christie International actively support projects in the Great Lake region in Burundi. Burundi, Rwanda, and the DRC. Thanks to that project, we were able to foster a culture of peace and non-violence, thanks to the African partner, African Reconciled. The first project started in May 2018. The objective was to help young generation towards more empowerment, especially through the discovery of entrepreneurship and creation of SMEs, in order to fight against the uh, um, issue of unemployment and to avoid uh, uh, them being recruited by uh, militia. Thanks to that project, young people from those three countries were able to meet and to have projects together. After this first project, a second project was created and uh, young people are empowered to be actors of peace. Also, thanks to the creation of a digital center in Goma, that center helped those young people be trained in the creation of websites, blogs, but also databases and digital applications in order to fight against fake news and misinformation in their community community and also to be able to better understand the impact of media. This uh, first project gave a platform, a voice to those young people and gave them an opportunity to have an impact on their community. They were able as well to disseminate messages of peace. By means of example, a young man which was trained in Goma was able to develop an app, an app through which they can be geolocalized so that they are they don't run the risk to be killed in case the fish outside of the area of fishing in the uh, Lake Kivu. Um, this project, again, helps young people to be uh, um, to be in favor of peace, to support peace, and we would like to thank UNESCO for their support. Thank you very much, Béranger. Thank you with us so much. Now we're going to give the floor to Wendy Schweiger-Moore. Um, Good morning from Greensboro, North Carolina in the United States. I am Dr. Wendy Schweiger-Moore and I am the Director of International Capacity Building for the National Board for Certified Counselors or NBCC. In November 2003, the NBCC Board of Directors voted to add International Capacity Building and the development of international credentials to our work, and in doing so, expanded our mission to advance the counseling profession and increase mental health service capacity. The intersections of social determinants of health, economic stability, community status, 
in November 2003, the and access to health services and education are essential considerations for counselors and other mental health professionals. These intersections impact public awareness, stigma, and the engagement of mental health professionals in their practice, training, and research. Better understanding of these critical intersections can serve as a powerful mobilizer of efforts to expand mental health in global communities. I would like to highlight two of our programs as examples, the Mental Health Facilitator Program and the MBCC Institute's program. The Mental Health Facilitator Program, or MHF, is a fundamental mental health training program, especially designed for laypersons and paraprofessionals that teaches helping skills and mental health knowledge. Originally created in consultation with the World Health Organization, counselors and other mental health professionals become involved as trainers worldwide. The MHF program has been taught in 35 countries, and the curriculum has been translated into 14 languages. In addition, six articles have been published in peer-reviewed journals introducing the program and its effectiveness. NBCC believes that this program matches UNESCO's pragmatic approach to global citizenship through education. The NBCC Institute's program is a service learning opportunity for counselors and other mental health professionals to join us in traveling to partner locations around the world, learn about mental health strengths and challenges in local communities, and participate in service learning projects chosen by the local partner. Common institute locations include Bhutan, Malawi, Rwanda, Uganda, and Vietnam. NBCC engages in these programs and believes that they do promote in counselors and other mental health professionals the three crucial UNESCO principles of respect for diversity, solidarity, and a shared sense of humanity. We hope that our programs provide a foundation for a collective global identity and responsibility as global citizens, providing mental health care to a diverse citizenry, as outlined in the introductory note for this forum of NGOs. Thank you very much for your time. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup pour votre intervention. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. I think Patrick Gallo is with us. Patrick, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Voilà, nous attendons Patrick Gallo. Okay, we're still waiting for Patrick Gallo. We saw his face, but all of a sudden the image disappeared. So we'll wait for a couple of seconds. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you that this is approaching the end of our session. But we can have another session giving you the floor again with the same amount of time tomorrow afternoon. So rest assured, for those of you who could not speak but were on the list, you'll have an opportunity to speak tomorrow. Okay, I do hope we can talk to Patrick Gallo now. No, we can't. Okay, well, that's a shame, but we'll have to close this session unless someone wants to take the floor. Okay, we are sorry, we, we can't reach people, so we'll meet again tomorrow. I think that's um, the best we can do. And we will meet again tomorrow, and you have plenty of opportunities to talk. See you tomorrow, and I hand over to Nick. Our thanks go to those NGO representatives who were able to speak in this session. Um, we do apologize that there were some technical difficulties and also that some NGOs who had requested to take the floor um, didn't seem to be here to do so. Um, we will do our best to make sure there is another session tomorrow available for NGOs to take the floor in a similar way. Um, and we will email those who have requested to take the floor to ensure, please, that they are actually here to take the floor in the session when they have requested it and have been invited to do so. Um, my thanks, of course, go to uh, Ma Martine, Chantal, and Mary Christine uh, for moderating this session. It is my hope that you have all found today as productive <laughs> and interesting as I have, and we are very grateful to you for attending. And of course, thank our speakers and interpreters and moderators sincerely. Um, I would now like to hand over to uh, Sabina Colombo, who will close this evening's session. Merci, Nick. Uh, Thank you, Nick. Dear participants, 
This is the end of this uh, rich and interesting day with uh, some technical hiccups, but we will make up for that tomorrow. We were followed online by many countries. Many countries were connected, so we're very happy. We will meet you again tomorrow, two o'clock Paris time, with a very interesting program with lots of presentations, videos, and also a music performance. On behalf of the UNESCO, I'd like to thank you for attending, and we'll see you again tomorrow.